Good morning. I hope you're doing well. I'm Paul, and this is Ask Paul. Let's see what we have on tap today. Michael in Cold Springs, New York. <laughs> what percentage of audiophiles, in your opinion, are psychologically unstable? <laughs> what? <laughs> Michael. <laughs> hey, I'm an audiophile. Look, dude. Well, I guess if you ask my family, they'd say Pop's a little unstable. Uh, and part two, what percentage of high-end salespeople, in your opinion, use psychology to sell to audiophiles? Well, look, we, we got to address the f first of Michael's questions. <laughs> I, hmm, I've been in high-end audio for 40-something years, and... I I got to say I I think we are actually one of the more stable groups of human beings I've ever run into. Seriously. Are are we are we nuts sometimes and passionate and 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 uh, yeah, of course we are. And we, I don't care if you're into photography or or cars or whatever you're into. Yeah, I mean, there's some nutso people running around. And I've had some crazy experiences, I got to tell you. But as far as people go, I think we're a very, very stable group. I I probably, in the 40 years I've met, I've met one or two guys who I'm a little, eh. um, There's, oh, stories galore. I, I don't know if I've ever told this. I'm currently writing a book called Confessions of an Audiophile. And it was going to be one of those, hey, you know, spend six months and write it up, and now we're a year or something into it. <laughs> oh, it's big eyes and, you know, big appetite, but it takes a lot of work. Anyway, in that, in that book that, that uh, I'm working on, I tell the story of designer John Iverson, who made electron kinetics, and he was a brilliant designer. He had some kind of secretive ties in NASA or the government or something. There's all kinds of crazy stuff about it. And I remember the, the story that my, my friend uh, and former partner, Arnie Newdell of Infinity, told when John had gotten a bad review of one of his, eagle, I think they were called Eagle amplifiers, and had come over drunk as a skunk and had threatened to take a, a, a chain and, and wrap it with shackles around his leg and the other end of it, the amplifier, and he was going to hurl himself off the Santa Monica Pier and kill himself. Psychologically unstable? Well, yeah, I suppose anybody that's threatening to, you know, tie a boat anchor around their, their leg and jump off the Santa Monica Pier isn't, you know, isn't the most stable of people, I suppose. But John was just an emotional guy. And uh, he fortunately didn't do that. And uh, gosh, the stories of, of people. But I, I think I think they're just passionate people. And I would uh, I would never think of audiophiles as emotionally unstable. Funny? Yeah, I, <laughs> I got to share one real quick story with you. Just forgive me. This just popped into my head. Years ago, in Las Vegas, we used to go to the Consumer Electronics Show, and during that time, there was also another trade show going on that was called the Porno Show. Yeah, believe it or not, the pornographic industry has its own trade show, and here we got porn stars and porn vendors, and they're all showing up, and they were in the, if I remember right, they were in the Sahara and we were, where were we? Well, we were sort of next door, and I don't remember exactly where we were. But anyway, the, they were going on at the same time. And on setup day, the day before the show, we're in our room upstairs and setting up the stereo system and getting the displays going. And there was a phone call, and it's for me. And it's downstairs, the the desk downstairs and they said you have a package for terry mcgowan terry's my wife she wasn't there so i figured now why would 
why would anybody send a package to Terry? Maybe they meant it was from Terry. So I go down and I pick up this box. I don't know, that big, right? And it's a box. And it is actually to Terry McGowan, though her name, which is T-E-R-R-I, has been spelt incorrectly with a Y. Okay. So I go upstairs, don't think much about it. Somebody opens the the box up as I'm setting up and they go, whoa, what, what the hell is this? And we open it up and it is a box full of sex toys, right? Like, oh Lord. I mean, just let your imagination run wild. And that was what was in the box. And I realized, oh my goodness, they there must have been a Terry McGowan staying at the hotel who was a, a vendor of sex toys at the at the show. And we we called downstairs and they said, no, nah, you know, no, it's it was scheduled to go to your room. And uh, so now you got it. So I thought, well, yeah. so we oh, I mean, I won't get too graphic on you, but we were having sword fights with these long, you can imagine things and <laughs> we cracked ourselves up. Anyway, um, about two days into the show, there I noticed a guy kind of sheepishly standing in the corner. And when I got done talking, he could see my name tag was McGowan. He came up to me and he said, um, my name is Terry McGowan. <laughs> So we had put everything back as nice as we could, and I, you know, we handed it back to Terry. But I, I don't know how I got off on that story. But anyway, so yeah, um, pretty normal people. And as far as psychology is concerned, I would say any good salesperson in any industry uses, I don't know if psychology is the right word. I mean, there are certain ways you, if you're talking to a customer, one of the great psychological tricks, here's a good one for you. I'll tell you a little, tell you an inside secret. You have to actually listen to what someone's telling you. So, I mean, if that's a psychological trick to listen to the customer, explain to you what they're looking to do and what they want, well, yeah, I guess then. I guess salespeople use psychology, but no, in general, I think we're one of the more normal groups of people I have ever been associated with. So I don't know if you were looking for some good dirt or what. I don't think it exists, at least not from my perspective. Anyway, great question. And thanks for the laugh today. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.